Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. If you've ever coded uh, using Windows Presentation Foundation architecture, uh, you've probably come across this, this walkthrough, my first WPF desktop app. And I read through this, uh, gosh, several months ago, and I thought, well, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I, I didn't think this would be the right fit for Mogwai, but I was thinking about the node editor, and I remembered that this, this whole series is about using WPF, and I wanted to be able to use some of the, the new navigation window and, and pages that go in there. And so for the node editor, I decided we're just gonna go all in WPF, all right? And you can read through this. It says it takes 20 minutes to read. Yep, it does take 20 minutes to read. If you know what all the acronyms, everything means, and, and if you know what everything means in this document, then you probably don't need to read it. <laughs> so to go through this takes a while. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. It would That would be super boring. We'll, we'll go through the steps, and I'm going to show you, you know, what they had and what I did. And most of it's the same, especially when it comes to providing the data source. We've I've changed changed it up quite a bit. So we were going to be using the navigation window instead of a regular as window class in our GUI. And I'll show you that here in a second. And we're also going to be using pages. And pages are very uh, HTML-like. And, and you can kind of read this. It kind of describes what it is. I forget where it says. Oh, here it is right here. The application is composed of several WPF pages that are hosted in a browser-style window. So the navigation windows is going to be a browser style window and the pages are going to be like HTML pages. So if you've ever done any HTML coding, this, this will be somewhat familiar with you, uh, to you. And um, except it won't be HTML, it's, it's using the XAML. And if you've ever done any Angular JS coding, this will be very familiar to you because it's, <laughs> it's, very, it, it's very similar to Angular JS, okay? Okay, so here we go. So step one, we're gonna create the application. When you create the application, it creates the main window. And if you remember in our code here, um, here's, where's my main window? Oh, here it is right here. I've already got a main window, and that's what you see when we fire up Mogwai. So I didn't need to create another main window or an application. So we, I basically uh, skipped that part, all right? But I did need a main window to hold the, the node editor application, and I called it a node editor, and it is right here, okay? Not to get ahead of the, uh, the steps here. Okay, so step one is create the app, well, if you're using the Mogwai, if you're downloading the Mogwai code, uh, you don't need to do that. It says open the application XAML. It's just going to show you what it looks like. It's going to say our, the startup is going to be main window XAML. And that is true. Ours, ours does say that. Where is our application? By the way, this application XAML is also created by default uh, when you create a new application, okay? And just ignore this stuff down here. And here's our startup URI, and it's just mainwindow.xaml, okay? You notice they're using URI. I, I I didn't catch that when we first started doing this, but <laughs> everything is is apparently, the way it loads it, it's, it's very web page-like. Okay, step three, open the main window XML. Uh, this is the main window of your application, the window, Okay, I'm just going to read a couple of these because they're all kind of related, right? So step three is, is show the, the main window or open the main window. So we're going to open it up. And this is this is where I kind of veered from these instructions. So, so our main window is not going to be our navigation window. And that's what step three and four are, are telling you in this step. Our main window, where is it? Right here is what's... So this is our main window on Mogwai, right? So to create our node editor window uh, for Mogwai, I just clicked on the <laughs> root node 
and uh, click on add and then oh sorry it's running add new item and then filter on WPF and then you just go and and click on window okay and I'm not gonna go ahead and create it because we don't need it I named the this window I, I called my node editor okay so it was like node editor dot XAML all right I'm not gonna go ahead and create it I've already created it and that is this guy right here okay and in the instructions it says to change the window element name to navigation window and so I did do that step see this was just created as a window right and I changed it from window to navigation window all right just so we're, just so we're all on the same page our main window is called node editor okay and that's going to be this navigation window and we need to call this navigation window so we want to call our navigation window from when we right click on a node right which i kind of showed you earlier so if we add an add a node right right click on it when we click on edit we want our node editor to come up and so this edit command is actually in our class node which is right here okay so if we go down here and find edit okay so we're going to call up our node editor and as you notice so here's here's our node editor class that we just created renamed it to uh, navigation window i'm passing it the the me object which is the class node that this is the instance of class node that called it. So when you right click on a node, you wanna just pull up that one instance of it. And then we're just gonna show it. You notice I set it as a dialog. If you're not familiar with dialogs, it's so, okay, so if we add a router and, and we click on something, it won't let you do anything with the application, right? Until you clear, kill the child window. I kind of already showed you what the node editor looks like, but anyway, that's cool. Okay, so yeah, so from class node is calling up our our new navigation window. Okay, so change the window out to navigation. Yep, did that. Remove the grid elements. Uh, yep, did that. It had a couple of grid definitions in here. Uh, did that. And uh, change the following properties next. Uh, it's just setting the, the title, height, and width. Not very exp uh, not very interesting. I'll show it to you real quick. It's. I just want, want you to set this. I just called it Node Editor. And um, let's see here. It says open. Now, whenever you see, remember, whenever you see main window, it's talking about the Node Editor window. Okay, uh, it says open node editor. Oh, it's asking for the VB file. And yeah, it contains a partial class, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're not using C sharp, so we don't have to care about, about step eight. It's just it's deriving from navigation window class. And uh, I'm sorry I'm blowing through this. this. I don't want this video to be too long and boring. So if you have any questions, just post them in the comments. Okay, so now we're gonna add some files. So in this section, we're gonna add two pages, all right? And to add these pages, you can, this is very step-by-step -step with it. I'll show you real quick. You just highlight the project, right click on it, add new item, filter on WPF, select page, name it, and click okay. And I added two of them. One is called the node edit home page and one is called the node edit config page. Okay. And in the instructions, it's gonna add a new page. So one of them is called their home page. So we're just gonna call it the home page, right? I don't think they've added the report page yet, but it's coming. So there's another page. Okay, so right now we're just op opening the home page. So open the home page and it just wants us to set the title, the height and width, you know very uninteresting stuff so let's go ahead and do that i'll just show it to you real quick so here's the home page right here 
Uh, ignore this stuff down here for now. And here's the title and the height and width. Okay, very, very uninteresting. Okay, now it's going to want us to go back to the node editor page and add a source property to the navigation window. Now, I did not do this. Okay, so, and, and I'll show you why. Let me pull this up here. Okay, so we go back to the node editor, XAML. Now they want us to add a source property in here, right? It's like source equals blah, blah, blah. Well, it actually equaled the, uh, sorry, I was actually pointing with my finger. That doesn't work, does it? It wants us to point it to this node editor homepage. So when you first fire up this, this node editor, it pulls in that page. And that does work, but I changed it because I am using, oop, where is it? So here's the code behind for the, the node editor, the main window, and I'm doing it programmatically, if that's the correct term. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm uh, instantiating a new instance of my node edit home that page that we just created, but I'm passing it a class node that called, that we right clicked on to fire up the node editor. And I'm passing that because it's gonna be our data context for our other pages, right? So I, when I create this new home page, I pass it the, the class node object. And then once it's created, then we just navigate to the, the, new, home page, the new home page, right? Which is this guy right here. And you can kind of see what it looks like down here. This is what the XAML looks like. All right, and it's and this is just saying, yeah, you can do it using the GUI. All right, so step seven is the second page we're gonna add. And theirs is called the report page. I called ours the config page, okay? And it's this guy right here. So we're gonna add this guy right here. Okay, so it's, you know, it's config, home, and main, right? Okay, so don't want to get ahead of the steps here. Okay, so they want us to open the page, set this title, set its design height and width. Yeah, I'm not gonna go through, it's the exact same as what we just did earlier. Okay, so it's just telling us about the code behind pages. It says your code should look like the following. When you create these new page files, and I know it's a little bit out of order, right? <laughs> yeah, so it does, it creates, this class looks completely empty. And one of the things that I found curious that they forgot to, to mention in there is, oops, sorry, in the code bind, sorry, uh, you have to add this. When you add a, a user control, it automatically adds this. But when you add a page, it doesn't, which I find very head scratching. But it definitely needs this. It won't work without it. So <laughs> make sure that you add this in there, okay? So where are we? Okay, now it's telling us to add an image and they called it watermark. And so I put the images for Mogwai in this folder called images, right? And it has all our images and I added the logo, light blue, 500 by 500. Oh, there you go, you can see a preview of it right there. Let's see, what does the instruction say to do with it? I think that's it. This is very out of order right here. Uh, so anyway, it says add the, the image name watermark and it tells you to, oh yeah it's telling you how to do it i guess i should show you how to do that it's it's just it's pretty easy so you just say uh, you click on the application root node there say add uh, actually an existing item and then you just navigate to wherever your images are you have to change the filter here so image and you just click on it and then say add, right? And it defaults to adding it dumping ground, right? Or in this main dumping ground right here. And then you just, you can just drag it up, right? And then just drag it into this images file. That's where I keep them, okay? Okay, and then it's, <laughs> this is this is kind of a, I guess a sanity check if you, <laughs> you build and run it. So if, if it doesn't run at this point, you need to go back and, and see what happened, all right? Uh, I'm not going to show you that. It's it's a do-nothing step. Okay, so now we're going to create the layout. 
I, I'm not going to read all this to you. You can read all this stuff. But step one is go to the home page, right? And we're going to set the margin property and grid. Uh, so they look like that. So let's go to the home page. XAML. Here's the margin. Uh, the the margin attribute in the grid element. <laughs> Got to get all the all the names right. And uh, yep, it looks like that. Yeah, you can do it through the GUI. And now we're going to add our um, our row and column definitions uh, for the grid. And these are kind of weird little things. You just so for however many columns you want and however many rows you want, you just add one of these things in there, <laughs> one of these elements, right? Tag pairs, whatever you want to call it. And uh, you put it in between the grid tags. And by the way, they, they're as bad as I am about switching between tags and elements uh, for the XAML. So basically you just copy and paste that in between the grid tags. And let's see, where is it? Oh, here it is. That's exactly what I did. All right. And you notice I have an extra one. We'll get to that in the steps. They're going to tell us to add an extra one later. Why they didn't have us do it at first, I do not know. Okay, so the height with all that other stuff. You can read this. It's just kind of explaining that. Okay, so now we're going to get to the add controls. We're going to be working on the home page. We're going to add a list box, a label, and a button. All right. And basically, step one, it's just going to tell you, copy and paste all this code. All right? That's, that's definitely easy enough. So you just copy and paste all this code. And by the way, this stuff right here is just going to be temporary because they're going to change it later on. I just wanted to let you know. Okay, and I'll show you that in our code here. It's going to look a little different because um, later on in this video you'll see they're going to have us change it but anyway here's a list box and the header our border and then a label for everything and I'm, I'm pretty sure that lines up with yeah so here's the border border list box oh the button sorry uh button yeah here it is down here and as you can see this stuff looks different right and and you'll see why here in a minute but you can just follow, if you're just following along with it, you can just follow along. I, I think they're just kind of showing you how all this stuff works. Okay, build and run the application. That's just a sanity check step. Okay, and now that, it, that image we added five minutes ago, now we're going to actually do something with it. I mean, it seems really out of sequence here, but this section will be, up, or we're going to be updating the home page. So we're going to, open the home XAML, and now we're gonna add another column, which is, remember I was telling you, we're gonna add a third column, and it's gonna be a fixed width, and it's way down here. And while they add, they put, while they add all this other crap in here right now, I, I don't know. Anyway, they want us to add another column, oops, this guy right here, and you can see it in, in mine, it's this guy right here, right? Okay, and then we're going to add another row. And it's funny, their, their highlighting doesn't seem to work very good. Anyway, so you're going to add another row. I guess here's mine. And then uh, move the controls to the second column by setting the grid.column property to one in each of the three controls. So you're just shifting everything uh, to the right. And I, I guess they're doing this to kind of show you how to move the controls around in the columns and rows. Maybe that's the point of all this. Yeah, so and this is just telling, it, telling you to move it to another row. All right. And you can read through this. I'm not going to read it to you. It's, it, it, it's, it's like an exercise just to show you how to move stuff around. Okay. Uh, now, finally, we get to set. <laughs> we're going to use that, that, Im that water, that uh, image file we added earlier, right? In step five. That's the uh, panel.background property. This XAML anywhere between the grid grid tags, right? And so we can go look at my code here, and it should be around here somewhere. Uh, oh, there it is. Went right by it. And so since I'm using a folder called images, you have to give it 
the path, right? So it's images slash and then the name, which is different from theirs, which is just, uh, you know, they just put the name of the file in there. So I just wanted to point that out to make sure you get the full path, full path name in there if you if you use the images folder like I do. And then you can play around with the stretch. You can stretch this logo or, or the picture, you can fill it, you can tile it. Just kind of like doing a background on your Windows desktop, right? Okay. Let's see. Okay, so we set the background image. Uh, okay, before the border mount element. Oh, now here's where we add the label, which I, I kind of showed you that earlier. It's right before the border element. And then you run the application. Now we can look at the label here real quick if you want. It's not that it's just this guy right here, right? All right. And as you can see, mine, mine is a little different. We're going to add a style sheet here, which is similar to CSS. If you've ever done <laughs> HTML coding, and then that'll eliminate all this stuff right here, right? Okay, so build and run the application. It's a do-nothing step. Our sanity, I should call it a sanity check step. <laughs> make sure, make sure you're, you're up to speed. It should look like this, right? So now we're going to uh, add some code, so they say. And we're gonna do it in the home, home page. So we're gonna add a click event handler and a, uh, to the button element. I'm just gonna go to the button, add this, this click event, so you Click on the button, it raises this event right here. And then we're gonna add the code behind for it. So one step one, two, and three, and that's just gonna be in the code the code behind, right? And uh, you'll notice that the code behind looks very familiar. But yeah, so this this is very familiar. This is how we fired up our um, our home page from our main window, our, our navigation window, let's call it. Okay, and so that's why this looks very familiar. And so that's We'll go look at, at my code real quick. Okay, here's the button. And yeah, just ignore this. This is that style sheet I was telling you. We're gonna add that later on in the video. Uh, I, I changed the name to view button click because button click is very non-descriptive. <laughs> and the code behind for it is view button click right here. Just ignore this stuff, this stuff right here. But you can see all we're doing is we're just instantiating a, a, a new instance of, of config, right? Of the config page. And then we're gonna navigate to it, right? And we're just passing on the data context. And we'll look at that later. But that is exactly the way we did it from, here's our main page, all right? And it's the exact same thing we did in there. So from the main page to the home page, we just you know, pass this class node object and navigate it to it. And we're just doing the exact same thing uh, with this view button click, except we're going from the home page to the config page. All right. Okay, so the next step here, we're going to be, we're going to create the UI for the report page. And ours is called the config page. So you remember we've got our main page, which is, and we've got our main page, we've got our home page, and we've got our config page. Just remember that report page is the config page, okay? And uh, it's just telling us to open our config page up and then just copy and paste all this code. <laughs> we, we can look at it here real quick. Actually, you've seen, you know, here's, here's more of the column and row definitions that, that we did in the home page. And it says, you know, copy and paste this between the grid tags now. So, and you have to be careful with this. It's, so it's missing the grid tags in this example. The, the, the grid tags is actually asking you to copy and paste. So these are the, oh, that's background image. These are the column and definition rows for the grid tag that you can't see. Okay. And here's a, a label that, that we're adding. And then it's creating a grid inside of a grid. Okay. So it's creating a grid inside of a grid and it's given a margin and, and it's got its own column and row definitions. And, and these are not for this main one. It's for the grid inside the grid. And then to top it all off, they're putting a grid inside the grid inside the grid right here. There's a grid that we can't see. 
So that's layer one. There's a grid and a grid, so layer two. And then a grid and a grid and a grid, layer three. And <laughs> you can see coming out of both of them right here, of course, the third one is not on here. I wanted to point that out because this can get a little bit confusing. It's just using a stack panel to add a couple labels in. Okay. And nothing interesting there. And so instead of using a list box, this time they're using a data grid. Okay. And, and this thing, I'm not familiar with data grid, but it, it looks very much like creating a table in HTML, right? So I, I'm, I'm guessing it's kind of the same thing. You give it some, well, this is just styling, so this doesn't matter right here. But if you look at this, and then the columns, and these are the headers on top of the columns, it looks like it's creating a table, right? So um, if you're familiar with tables in HTML, you'll probably be familiar with that. And they comment down here, it's very similar to the, the home page, except they're using data grid instead of a list box, right? And then here's another do nothing sanity check step and make sure it runs. And then you click on the view button to make sure our, our event handler works and, and that's it for that step. And we can go look at my code real quick. So here's the XAML. So here's the grid, the layer one grid. Okay, just ignore this stuff for right now. We'll get to that. And um, here's the background image. Here's the, the first set of column definitions I showed you. Uh, here's a label. Okay, so here's a grid inside the grid. Okay. And then it's got its own row and column definitions. And here's the, it's just a label. It's gonna, it's just saying name, and then it's gonna give it a name. And we'll look at this stuff here in a minute. I commented this out because I didn't need it. And here's a grid inside the grid inside the grid that holds the data grid, which is like a table, all right? And it's pretty much all the same as what's in the, uh, the example that we looked at. And so here's coming out of all three of those grids, all right? And so now we're going to create our style sheet. And this goes, they, they, they want us to put it, and I did put it in the application.xaml, which if you remember, my application.xaml from Malgui is for the whole, for the main program. But uh, I, I really wanted to put it in uh, this node editor. And I tried creating a, a resources here, but it wouldn't filter down. So I didn't want to do any more research, so I didn't bother. I, I, I just copied and pasted that stuff that's in the, uh, the example and put it in my application.xaml. And I didn't change a thing, <laughs> okay? So when you're looking, so on this example right here, so this is, this is the one part where I'm actually using the application.xaml in Mogwai, all right? And it's just saying, yeah, copy and, on, and paste the, the code in there, right? And this is very similar to a CSS style sheet, if you've ever done HTML stuff. And it kind of tells you what all this stuff's about. And so now they want us to go to the home and config pages <laughs> and take all that styling out and put in, you know, our style sheet uh, attributes in there. And I'm not going to go through all this stuff. You guys get it. If you've done any kind of HTML program, all I'm doing. So we'll go look at one of them. Let's go look at this, this uh, list. This is in the home page. Okay, so yeah, so that label for the list, list box used to look like this. You know, it had all the uh, font definitions and everything, colors and sizes defined right there. And then we changed it to, yeah, so they want us, then we just put the style attribute in there and then delete all that other stuff out, right? And I was, uh, I, I did this not recording it, but I, when I was scrolling up looking for what it used to look like. And <laughs> you can see right here, it's already been changed in one of their examples <laughs> before they even told us to change it. Anyway, <laughs> where are we? Sorry, that was... Okay, so now we're gonna open the config page and do the same thing, right? They're just, they're telling you to copy and paste everything. I, I, I 
would not suggest that. I would just copy out the stuff that you want. And I think a lot of people, when they're going through this walkthrough, fall, you know, they fall, they, they say, oh, I'm going to copy and paste just like they say. And, and I think that's where they get into trouble. If you copied and pasted this uh, style sheet attribute before creating the actual style sheet, this, is, this isn't going to work properly, right? Yeah, just, just <laughs> be careful when, when they tell you to copy and paste everything. You, you have to look through it, all right? Okay, so where are we? Uh, so style controls. Um, yeah, we're going to go to the config page and basically do the same thing. I I'm not going to show you this. You, you get the idea. And then we've got the sanity check step, okay? Okay, so now we're going to bind the data to a control. And this is where Mogwai and, and this example uh, differ quite a bit. So they want you to um, basically copy and paste this, this XML, XAML data in between these uh, grid resource tags. And, and that's going to be basically your, your database, if you will, right? And that's what the data they're going to bind to. And we want real data, right? <laughs> so we didn't use that with Mogwai. So I'll try to show you that as we go along uh, and still stay in line with the steps in this walkthrough, okay? Okay, and so just to show you, that, so here's, a, here, here's our home page. Here's a, a grid resource tags, right? And you can see we don't have anything in there except for data template, which is the next step. So it's just saying within the grid resources element, <laughs> add the following uh, data template elements or tags. I, I don't. And mine is, is similar. So we're going to use a data template. We're going to give it a name, or they call it a key. And, uh, and all it's going to do is uh, uh, print a label, right? And with the content that's being bound to this XML data. And so when you see this little at right here, this is an XML. XAML data and of course XPath is kind of self-explanatory. So they're just going out on here and finding the name, property, and our attribute and plugging it in the label, right? And, and for this list box. And if you look at mine or Mogwai, uh, it's similar, the content, except I've got a blank binding. And I'll show you why. It's like that here in just a minute, okay? Now, one thing I want to point out about this <laughs> this uh, data template and binding is it's not using the data context. The data context is like the data that's for this whole XAML, right? It's it's I don't know. It's it's this domain, if you will. <laughs> I don't I don't know what to call it. Anyway, it's it's the data for everything. And of course we have it set to my node and I'm getting a little bit ahead of the instructions, but, but I wanted to point this out that this, this data template, this template that's, that's named uh, name item template doesn't get its uh, binding from the data context as you would kind of think, right? It's actually getting it from the list box that's calling this name item template. So if we go down a list box right here, you can say it's going to be using this template called name item template, and it's going to pass in the binding source, and I'm, I'm passing it in using the code behind right here. So here's the property. So I gave it a name, uh, properties list box, right? And I'm saying properties list box, item source, uh, this list of items that we're going to create. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, what I wanted to point out is, is that this data template isn't using the data context for its binding. All right. And this can be a real stumbling block if you don't, if you don't understand this, because you'll be saying, why isn't it binding to whatever you're trying to get out of your data context? And it just won't work because it's actually getting it from this list box. All right. Or I should say it's it's getting it from whatever entity or element <laughs> is is you is calling it by name. So 
Uh, when ListBox says, okay, my item template is this, then it's passing its binding information or its source information to the data template. And I hope that makes sense. So you can see right here, it's, it's, the example is binding the source to this expense data XML that we uh, looked at earlier, right? And that's just pasted in between the grid resource tags. And here's the, the template right here. Well, so with, with XML, or with WPF, I should say, so when you first um, instantiate this, this home page right here, the first thing it does is this initialize component. And they're doing it with this really goofy, they're calling the default constructor inside this modified constructor. I, I don't know why. I don't know why they just didn't copy and paste this guy into here, but I just left it the way the example was. But when this thing gets instantiated, the data context hasn't even been set yet, right? So this is this is before this this when it's calling this initialized component is before initialized component. By the way, has to be first. You, you cannot set it second. It won't let you. So it's initializing the XML XAML before it does anything else, including setting the data context. So I'm passing in the data. I'm passing in the source after this initialized component is being executed or the XAML is being executed. The way they're doing it in their example works okay, right? Because their source is is inside the XAML, right? It's right here, right? But uh, it won't work with Mogwai and using an external uh, data source. Okay, and I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, just post them under the video, right? Okay, and so if everyone is still with me <laughs> here, let's see. Uh, what else did I change? I I have a note here. I uh, point out that I, I I actually well I gave the list box a name so I could pass it its source. That's uh, different from the example. And uh, and of course I set it in the code behind. I'm I'm looking at some notes I have to make sure I I point that out to you guys. Yeah, so it's being set right here. Okay, that's the uh, bind data to a control. Now we're gonna connect data to controls. So we're gonna be opening the config page and, oh, here's where it's talking about that constructor I, constructor I was showing you. And so now we're gonna add a constructor that takes an object so you can pass the expense report data. So now they magically plugged this in there <laughs> without even saying anything. And I'm not sure it, it needs this inherit page. I went ahead and left it in there. The previous, the home page doesn't have it. I do not know why this one has it. But anyway, here's our custom constructor. It's calling the, the default constructor new. And I think the only reason why it's doing this is so, so it can run the initialized component. <laughs> oh, the new constructor is, is getting data and they're just passing it as a generic object. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they're just passing it as a generic object. Uh, they know what they're passing it, so um, I can show you on mine. I just I just told it what it, what we we're passing it. So uh, so here's our oops, where are we at? So here's our node, our config page. Here's our uh, constructor. You can see you can see I just kind of left everything the way that our example was, and I'm just saying okay. Well, I'm passing it. Uh, um, a node called my, you know, defined as my node, and it's a class node. In their example, they're just passing it as a generic object. But to me, this is easier to read. <laughs> and in their example, they're not passing it a node, obviously. They're passing it the uh, selected item from the list box. And they called their list box the people list box. So here's the people list box, the name people list box. So whatever the selected item is, that's what they're passing. So they're what they're called a report page. We call it the config page. Okay, so they're just passing a selected item, and then they're just uh, navigating to the would be our config page, right? We can look at ours, and this is just same thing. Basically, I'm just passing in a node, and we've already discussed this and from the home page right here. So you click on it, oh, code behind. So this is the home page, 
and I'm setting the data context to my node that's being passed from the main page, right? And that, basically, that's just so I can get the name variable right here, right? <laughs> because all our properties are actually in a in a properties uh, class. That's a property of our class node, right? If you remember from previous videos, I'm passing a data context, which is basically my class node. And I could put my node in, in here, but since it's declared locally, I'd have to make it a property, blah, blah, blah. This is already public and can be easily shared. So I'm just using that to pass it through. And then we're just navigating to the config page which is this guy right here. And then we call up our, our uh, custom constructor, right? And since we're on our custom constructor, I might as well show you the rest of the stuff. I set the, the config pages data context to my node. And here I'm using reflection to get all the properties from our class node properties. And you've seen this in the previous videos in the mod IO module. This is how I uh, build our, our config save file, right? And it's just listing, going through this and, and building a list of class KVPs, which you saw also in a previous video. And it's just a, a simple little class. I can show it to you real quick if you would like. Uh, it's just this right here. It's got two public properties, key and value. And I'm just building this list. Uh, we will probably come back to this constructor here in a second. Uh, hopefully I won't forget. But let's, let's continue on. The next section here is style data with data templates. This title does not make any sense. None whatsoever. It's, it should be bind data with data templates, not style data with data templates. And if you're just going through this example and saying, well, I don't care about styling. I, I'm more interested in binding data. Um, you, you're, you might skip over this section and you would be doing yourself a great disservice because this section has nothing to do with style. <laughs> uh, well, at least CSS type styling, okay? And, as, and if you read, it says in this section, you'll update the UI for each item in the data bound list by using data templates. Okay, so we're going to open our config page and we're going to bind the content name and department to these two labels right here. Okay, if you remember, I, I kind of showed you earlier, but I commented this department out. And uh, this right here is pretty much exactly the same. In fact, I am using name, uh, but the binding's a little different because our, I'm not using that, that XAML, right? I'm using the, uh, I'm binding to our class node, which does have a name property, by the way, right? And so we'll go look at that in the code real quick. Uh, okay, here it is, right? So here's the one that's commented out, right? The department, here's the name. Okay, and so I'm just binding to name, right? And there, our context is the, uh, the class node, so, and it has a name. Okay, so uh, let's see, next step is, Okay, so step two is bind. Okay, we did that. So it says after opening grid element. Oh, what what does open grid element mean? <laughs> that, so this is nonsense. I, whoever was writing this, I, I think started um, losing focus or something. Anyway, it says add the following data templates, which define how to display the expense data report. Okay, so display, I don't know, same. It's just telling it to uh, bind the data, right? So you got a reason template, an amount template, and in ours, in Mogwai, I should say. Uh, oh, there are resources. Where are we at? Here we are. So here's our data templates. It's in between the grid resources tags. And I opened the grid, <laughs> whatever that means. So uh, so we've, I just called them name and value for the config and we're, we're binding it. So to, uh, to key and value, and we'll look a little bit more at that here in a second. Okay. So step four is uh, replace a data grid text column element with data grid template column elements. This is pretty much identical to mine. 
Uh, you can see the item source right here that they have. This is going to be different than mine because ours is uh, ours going to be binding differently. Okay, we'll go look at Mogwai real quick and scroll down. And you can see this is the, the two column definitions and here's the, and they want us to bind to this name template, name item template and value item template, which are these two templates that we just copied and pasted in. I, I renamed them, of course. And, uh, and I changed the binding path, the key and value. All right. And these are getting it from, remember, from uh, this data grid right here. And as you can see, I don't have a source item set because I set it in, in the code behind again. Uh, right here. So it's, so it's called the KVP data grid. And here's the item source. I'm just building a, a list of uh, class KVPs. Yeah, so this is just using the reflection uh, to get uh, all, the, all the properties out of our class node right here. So here, just, this is how we get all the properties. I kind of talked about this earlier. And then it's just building a list and feeding it into the last uh, list of KVPs. Okay, <clears throat> so step five is, a, is a, another check here, sanity check, uh, build and run it, select a person, hit the view button. Oh, well, that's it. You should, <laughs> you should get the list of names, hit the view of whatever name you want, and then and you get the, the name and the value. And of course, if we look at mine, that's... That's all it's doing, just put the name, value, and I'll go ahead and run it. I kind of showed it to you earlier. <laughs> all right. All right, so we're going to right-click on a node and click on Edit. And here's our list of names, uh, configuration, status, uh, testing, and reports. And these, these names, they're, they're, I should probably call them categories, but I didn't want to... <laughs> It's, I already made enough changes. I didn't want to confuse it even more uh, doing this video, but this, all this stuff's probably gonna change over time. The, the biggest thing I wanted is to kind of show you where I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is so, so this first page right here will be, you know, you can either look at the status of the node, uh, you can do some testing on the node, or you get reports out of the node, or you can edit its configuration. And so if we go view, and then these fields are are not editable at the t at the moment, but they will be. And of course, some of these fields um, will probably not include. Like I don't know about. We probably don't need to edit this stuff. But this stuff up here, oh, the index value definitely we can't edit. So I'll have to I'll have to put some checks in there to make sure that we don't accidentally edit <laughs> the index value because that could cause all kinds of problems in the collection. And another thing too, you notice the name, it's a router zero and not router underscore zero. It's the same with this right here. And that's because label interprets the underscore as some kind of control character. I, I kind of read it and I, I'm just like, okay, fine. So this will probably change to a text box or, or something that's not gonna mess up my underscores, all right? Okay, and we can look at this, and I, I guess this thing's a little bit kind of responsive, if you will. Uh, I notice this doesn't move around any, so it's not that responsive. And uh, here's the back and forward arrows. Well, that's kind of interesting. This seems to be more responsive than than this. But I maybe it's because I didn't finish. I don't know if I said it or not, but um, as you notice, I didn't... You, I didn't use a style sheet for for uh, this data grid. I, I didn't change any of this stuff. I was um, just trying to get this video going, or video out, right? But it's the same as what we did in the previous one. Uh, the, I'm, the, I'm sorry, the home page is uh, you just put these, um, you know, this style attribute in there. All right. One other thing I wanted to mention that I think I should point out is when I did this right here, I am pretty sure, well, not this one. That's probably not a good example. But when I, when I did this, this reflection and then put it in this 
uh, list object, right? <laughs> this, this, this list object. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I broke the, the data binding. So in other words, let me fire this guy up again. So in other words, if we, if we click on this edit node, right? Say configuration, let's say we, we change the, the make of it to something else or the model, right? You know, of course we'll have to have a button say, okay, or click, or even without a button, if we just change it with binding, it should automatically go update this guy. The, the name, name's not on here, but let's say the name is on there and we change the name, we should automatically see it, you know, pop up in the main page right here, right? And I don't think that's gonna work with, with this right here. I think I broke it. And, <laughs> and I wanted to point this out because I, I tinkered with this for quite a while. I was looking at this web page right here. It's uh, using entire objects as binding source. And they say you can use an entire object as a binding source. And oh, by the way, yeah, so here's that. All you have to do, it's a, I'll just read it to you. You can specify a binding source by using the source or data context property and then provide a blank binding dec uh, declaration, right? In scenarios which this is useful is including binding to objects that are of type string, binding to objects with multiple properties you're interested in, or binding to a collection of objects, right? And uh, for an example, binding to an entire collection of objects, uh, you can use this. Yeah, you know, look, go look at this link right here. And it says, no, you may need to apply custom logic so the data is meaningful, blah, blah, you can read this. Anyway, I, uh, and I kind of went and looked this, looked this example, but so this list box right here in their example is uh, it only takes, you have to give the thing a list or a collection. I didn't try a collection, but I'm guessing it can iterate through a collection. What does that mean? <laughs> so I, I don't think this is what they're talking about. You know, yeah, I, so I took my, the, the class, the properties. Oop, did I close it? Anyway, I, I took the, pro, the class node properties and then, and then did reflection on it to get all the properties out of it and then put it in a list. But I don't think it's going to work backwards. <laughs> I don't think if, if I update one of the properties in this list, I don't think it's going to put it back into my my class node properties class, right? Right here. So I'm thinking that I probably am going to have to put some kind of function in here that that you can do a get properties, right? And it'll get all these properties and return a list to whoever is requesting it and then a set properties where they can shoot me the list back and and set it and that way that maybe the binding will work we'll do some more research on it but i i wanted to point that out and i don't know this for a fact it may work but i i doubt it i, I would be very surprised if it where are we at i would very be very surprised if this actually had a two-way binding so don't forget you can support the network engineering video blog by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, <laughs> that's about it for this video. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. That helps and hit the subscribe button. That really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.